Hi, so this presentation will be about the core structure for those wishing to on. <coughs> Hi, so this presentation will be about the core structure for those wishing to pursue undergraduate and affiliate medicine. As mentioned before, the differences between undergraduate, affiliate, and graduate medicine are quite. Uh... Hi. So this presentation will be about the core structure for those wishing to pursue undergraduate and graduate medicine. As mentioned in the differences between undergraduate, affiliate, and graduate medical video. Graduate number one. Hi. So this presentation will be about the core structure for those wishing to pursue undergraduate and affiliate medicine. As mentioned in the differences between undergraduate, affiliate, and graduate medicine video, both the undergraduate and affiliate medical courses are split into preclinical and clinical sections. With the first half of being the clinical course, where you learn the medical sciences, and the second half being the clinical portion, where you learn to see patients and learn the practicalities of being a doctor. The part two course is an intercalation year where you pursue another study. <clears throat> Hi, so this presentation will be about the course structure for those wishing to pursue undergraduate and affiliate medicine. As mentioned in the differences between undergraduate, affiliate and graduate medicine videos, both the undergraduate and affiliate medicine courses are split into preclinical and clinical sections. With the first half being the preclinical course, where you learn the medical sciences, and the second half being the clinical portion, where you see patients and learn the practicalities of being a doctor, the part two course is the intercalation year, where you pursue another subject typically related to medicine. And as part of that, you will receive a Bachelor of Arts degree at the end of your third year. Uh, don't like that. Hi, so this presentation will be about the course structure for those pursuing. Hi, so this presentation will be about the course structure for those wishing to pursue undergraduate and affiliate medicine. As mentioned in the differences between undergraduate, affiliate, and graduate medicine videos, both the undergraduate and affiliate medicine courses are split into preclinical and clinical sections with the first half being the preclinical course where you learn the medical sciences and the second half being the clinical portion where you see patients and learn the practicalities of being a doctor. The part two course is the intercalation year where you pursue another subject, typically related to medicine. And as part of that, you will receive a bachelor of arts degree at the end of the third year. The affiliate medicine course, however, does not do this. And as such, once you finish second year, you immediately go into fourth year of the undergraduate course. These are the subjects that you'll be doing the first two years of medicine, if you're going to do the undergraduate or affiliate course. These represent the typical medical sciences subjects that you'll find in all medical schools. In Cambridge, we have particular acronyms that we use, such as HOM and BOD, but these are just shorthand for the subject names. Preparing for patients is a subject that you will encounter throughout the first three years of the course. This is one of the few instances where you can meet and speak with patients in the preclinical course. Typically, the patient... Uh, Hi. So this presentation will be about the course structure for those wishing to pursue undergraduate and affiliate medicine. As mentioned in the differences between undergraduate, affiliate, and graduate medicine video, both the undergraduate and affiliate medicine courses are split into preclinical and clinical sections. With the first half being the preclinical course, where you learn the medical sciences, and the second half being the clinical portion, where you see patients and learn the practicalities of being a doctor. The part two course is the intercalation year, where you pursue another subject, typically related to medicine, and as part of that, you will receive a Bachelor of Arts degree at the end of the third year. The Affiliate Medicine course, however, does not do this. And as such, once you finish the second year, you immediately go into the fourth year of the undergraduate course. 
on screen now are the subjects that you will be doing in the first two years of medicine if you're doing the undergraduate or affiliate course. These represent the typical medical science subjects you'll find in all medical schools. In Cambridge, we have particular acronyms we use, such as HOM or BOD, but these are just shorthand for the subject names. Preparing for patients is a subject you will encounter throughout the first three years of the course. This is typically one of the few instances where you will meet and speak with patients in the preclinical years. The Preparing for Patient course only takes up to one or two days of the year, and as such does not form a large proportion of your time in years one to three. FEBP and SETCHI are the Epidemiology and Statistics course, and the Ethics and Law courses respectively. These courses run throughout the year and culminate in separate exams at the end of the second term at your first year at Cambridge. Intercalation is an interesting part of the Cambridge course, and as I mentioned previously, you're able to undertake a subject, whether it be related to medicine or not, in your third year, which allows you to receive a bachelor degree as a result. Most students take one of the natural sciences options shown on the left, but some students also take other subjects examples of which are on the right side. However, just be aware that these other subjects often require good grades in your first two years of the medical course. In the latter half of the course, you can join the clinical school and start your placements in hospital and the community. These are example of what we call the stripey timetable, with each column representing 25% of the cohort. In year four, you will rotate around the core areas of medicine, so medical, surgical, and medical. In the latter half of the course, you will... In the latter half of the course, you will join the clinical school and start your placements in the hospital and the community. Here's an example of what we call the stripey timetable, with each column representing 25% of the cohort. In year four, you will rotate around the core areas of medicine, so a surgical, medical, emergency department, and GP. In the latter half of the course, you join the clinical school and start your placements in the hospital and the community. Here is an example of what we call the stripey timetable, with each column representing 25% of the cost. In the latter half of the course, you join the clinical school and start your placements in the hospital and the community. Here is an example of what we call the stripey timetable, with each column representing 25% of the cohort. In year four, you rotate around the core areas of medicine, so medical, surgical, emergency department, and general practice rotation. You also have what is known as a student-selected component in year four, which allows you to pick a project that you can do whether it be research, audit, or quality improvement. Year five sees you rotate around more specialized departments, such as psychiatry, infectious diseases, oncology, obs and gynae, and pediatrics, as well as two student-selected placements, one in medicine, the other in surgery, where you can choose which specialty you would like to be placed in for that rotation. Year six mirrors year four by doing medicine, surgery, and acute care placements and aims to place you as a well-rounded and effective doctor for your graduation in the coming year. Your home base will be in Cambridge at Adamux Hospital. This is where some of your teaching will take place. You will also be placed at one of the regional hospitals in East Anglia, rotating around the different hospitals for each of your three years in clinical school. Not all, not all hospitals in this picture are hospitals you can rotate to, but many hospitals such as Peterborough, Hingingbrook, West Suffolk, and others are hospitals you may be placed in during those years. If you have any more questions about this topic, please do email us or contact us on the website or contact us on our socials and we'll endeavour to get back to you. Thank you.